In the late 19th century, tobacco and eventually textile manufacturing drove the economic revolution in Winston-Salem. They also sparked the development of new neighborhoods like this one, the 14th Street Dreamland Park community. Investors and developers swooped in and bought farmland, dividing it into subdivisions to house the influx of workers pouring into Winston-Salem from hundreds of miles away. According to architectural historian Heather Fernbach, these businessmen enabled many to own a home for the first time. Usually it was by negotiating a small down payment, and again, newspapers in the time indicated that it was about a $15 um, down payment and then $10 a month to purchase, usually, a speculatively built bungalow. Like this one, last owned by George H. Black on Delabrook Road in East Winston-Salem. His handmade bricks built several Winston homes and buildings, as well as historical projects in Old Salem and in Virginia's colonial Williamsburg. At 91, Black gained international prominence when the U.S. State Department sponsored his trip to South America to teach brickmaking. Fernbach chronicles this and the development of neighborhoods all over the Twin City in her latest book, Winston-Salem's Architectural Heritage. It focuses on structures built between the turn of the 20th century and the 1960s. The neighborhoods that were outside of the city were important because they offered an escape from the industrial grime and, and pollution of downtown. So here was a, a way, and in some ways it was you know, moving out to the country, but you still had the amenities of the city. In the 1920s, the population exploded to more than 48,300, making Winston-Salem the largest city in North Carolina. According to Fernbach, neighborhoods were self-sufficient. Very often, individuals would purchase more than one lot, and so they might buy three quarter-acre lots or you know, two lots, and then they had rooms for gardens, livestock, like the Blacks had here, and that helped cut down on the cost of living. This is the second historical account of built structures for the city and for Forsyth County. St. Paul's United Methodist Church sits at the corner of New Walkertown and Delabrook Roads. Modernist architect Fred Butner designed it. Built in 1961, he used the latest building materials to reflect the modernist aesthetics of the period, while also preserving aspects of the congregation's African heritage. In this case, we have cast concrete panels that are installed sort of in a zigzag pattern, so that canted pattern added interest to the facade. He also, in this building, did something that he didn't do in any of his other commissions, which was use the multicolored glass in a pattern that emulated African textiles. So this was a really different approach um, and something that added a lot of interest to this particular um, structure. Since 2006, Fernbach has investigated almost 3,000 homes and other structures. She believes her book will be an important reference for city and county planners as they manage Winston-Salem's ongoing expansion. Um, so if the planning department, for example, is, is thinking about um, where they're going to, to put new community resources, um, they might want to preserve a historic park in addition to improving amenities um, at that site, for example. Or if new roads are being planned and, and a corridor might impact a historic property, you know, this would allow planners to, to look ahead and, and see what is, has been deemed most significant. As for the rest of us, well, I hope that they leave with a sense of pride and, and appreciation of um, their community and its history, the different stories, and I hope it inspires people to go out and collect additional history. You know, this is just a starting point. There's always more to learn. Catherine Mobley, WSTV Digital Media.